Okay, so back to the Great Dane. We're gonna start restoring this. First thing we gotta do is this battery. Okay, got the new battery in. I did forget to buy battery cables. I actually forgot to measure them, so I didn't know what size to buy. But I did clean these up really good and got them back on there. They'll do for now. And as well, I also cleaned up the connections on the solenoid, which I hope is on the screen because I can't see the screen. And also the connection on the starter itself way over here. Because the first time I turned it, nothing happened. And then jiggling around the wires, a little bit happened. And then cleaning them up, I actually got a turn on it. So I'm going to set up the camera here. There's a good chance it's going to start. Now, the gas in there is a year old. But it smells okay to me, so it, it might actually fire here. So let's give it a try. Okay, here we go. I'm fairly sure this was the issue. I've had this happen before. This is a little uh, fuel cutoff solenoid. It goes onto the bowl on the bottom of the carburetor. And when you take this off, when I took this off, and I've had this happen before, the little solenoid was stuck in the out or blocked position. That's for transporting. So the you know, mower bounces around a lot and that can bounce the uh, float around in the pin inside the carburetor a lot to the point where it's like advancing fuel. And so they have this cutoff thing, solenoid, to cut off the fuel. And it is plugged in to that plug there. And when you turn on your ignition, it pulls the plug back. But this one was absolutely stuck in the out position. And so freeing that up, I think that's going to let the fuel flow and let me start it. I hope. If you're wondering why the gas isn't coming out, it's because there's another cutoff at the bottom of the tank. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. okay, solenoid back on, plugged in, exhaust back on. Let's give this a try. Okay, there's no question, it's just um, it's just running on the gas that I'm pouring down the intake, which means that gas is not flowing through the carburetor. Okay, so here's where you can get lucky sometimes. This is your, where am I? This is your fuel pump right here. And this is, okay, this is your fuel line from the gas tank. This is your fuel line into the carburetor. And sometimes you can take your carburetor cleaner, carburetor cleaner, and just spray it right into here. I can't line up because I'm looking through a funny viewfinder. Anyway, you get the idea. Spray it in there, let it soak for probably about 20 minutes, and then hook it back up again and see what happens because um, it sure beats taking the carburetor off and opening it up and cleaning it. So that's what I'm going to do and see what happens. Okay, been soaking for a while. Put the hose back on and we'll give it another try.
Okay, we got success. It's not running well, but it is running. It just needs a tune-up at this point. As you can see, the hydro, both hydros work, but the other one is stripped, as I explained, stripped in the hub. But this one was working. Now the blades would not engage. Something started smoking, so it looks like the, ooh, something with the clutch is locked up or something. And I'll get to that, but my goal today was just to start the motor, and I did that, and I'm happy. All right, so stay tuned for more updates. Thanks for watching. Okay, and welcome back to episode two of Restoration on the Super Surfer. Uh, today I'm going to show um, the problems that need to be fixed and the parts that need to be ordered. This is the wheel motor in question. Remember that I told you that it was stripped. And I wanted to show a closer look at what's happening there. You can see there what had happened. Now the shaft itself, this part, is supposed to be harder than the key. So if your key comes loose, it's supposed to just annihilate the key and save your key way, which is the groove in the shaft. But as you can see, that's not what happened. The, um, the key became loose and wallowed around in there and absolutely destroyed the um, uh, what is it? the groove, the keyway, and in the same time in the hub, this of course mounts on there, the other way, like that. You can see there. Try to get it into the sun. It destroyed that keyway too, and so now if you put a key in there, it does not hold it firm. And I don't see a way of rescuing it. You know, I had thoughts of drilling through this to try to get a bolt all the way through this hub and the shaft to kind of do a dog bone thing, but there's really not enough room there. So I'm going to have to replace this plate and unfortunately replace that entire wheel motor because as far as I know, you can't just replace the shaft. So that's just what has to happen there. Now other than that, I wanted to show you, if you remember what was happening when I was trying to engage the blades, it would just smoke. And what was happening is the blade clutch was engaging. And it was just, uh, so the bottom of the engine, the power, was spinning on the belt. And it was, the smoke was coming from the belt because the belt wasn't able to turn. So I knew that something was blocked, and I've gotten the belt off of it now so that I can do that and test all these pulleys individually. You see, this one's good. This one is a little rough. That one's a little rough. Let's see if I can get some oil on that, see what happens. But this one, the main idler, it doesn't turn at all. Not at all. And then we have this spindle making a little noise. It's starting to go. Now, of course these are non-greasable um, spindles. And this one over here makes a lot of noise. Yeah, we've got some bearings going bad on that one. And then this one over here, let's see if I can get in there. This one doesn't turn at all either. So we've got two So we had two components on the system that didn't turn at all and that's why when you engage a clutch uh, it just smoked just smoked on the belt. We've got the new parts. They're all in this box right here. And that right there is a 98 pound box. It uh, the order came in two boxes, but I just condensed it all into one box. And then I can't uh, even move it. I mean, I can move it, but I can't move it without it falling apart. So it has to stay right there. And of course, we got new hydro oil because uh, we're going to have to change that uh, wheel motor. And so the system's going to have to be drained. But anyway, yeah, let me turn the camera off for a moment and get into this box. Pull a few things out. Okay, and here we go. Uh, okay, so this is going to be 
This is the um, hydro filter because the system has to be drained. I have to replace the fluid and do the filter. Now in this bag, this is kind of entertaining. The um, the grommets, not the grommets, but the bushings that are for the uh, front forks um, are actually all the <clears throat> all the bushings for everything on the whole mower. There we go. Are exactly the same, and uh, I figure at this point every single bushing on the whole thing has to be uh, replaced. So this is like the uh, the big main idler arm bushings, the thrust arms, the front forks, the um, something else somewhere. Anyway, there ended up being 12 of them, so we got um, actually 14 of them all in their individual bags. Other than that, we got some... Oh, there was a different thing in here somewhere. So this is... Okay, sorry, this is... Just bushings. Okay, uh, here we got new um, new positive cable for the battery. And, okay, so these are the flat washers. <laughs> flat washers. Flat idlers for the um, hydros, uh, hydro motors up there. There's two of them. And, uh, boy, so I have two of these. One, two. Okay, now, okay, and this is the oil filter for the engine. And then this right here, this I need to explain, so I'm going to turn off the camera and go get a part. Okay, so what we have here is old hub and new hub for the uh, rear wheels. And uh, if you remember, on the last episode I was explaining the Kiwi's all, the Kiwi, Kiwi, Kiwi is all chewed up in there which is part of the problem and I'll get to that in a moment but something else that happens on these this part actually failed on the other side years ago and I had to replace it and what had happened and you can see it starting on this one hairline crack started right there on that weld and the whole thing came loose so it's like two pieces you got this piece and this piece and they're welded together and that came loose years ago and yeah, the whole thing came apart, so that was a disaster. But you see on the redesign part, the aftermarket part, see how thick that one is? Look how thick that one is. And it's a single cast part. See there? No weld. So it's solid as a rock, and that happens a lot. Aftermarket parts are usually better than the originals. If you're thinking that the uh, clearance is different on these, it's actually not, it's just set up a different way. It does work. This is exactly the same part I put on the other side. And so now the two rear hubs will be really solid. Uh, but, you know, had to fix that keyway problem. And that's why we got a new wheel motor. And that's in the box too. Let's go back to the box. Okay, so, so over here, probably noticed those already. Oh, listen to the sound these things make too. Okay, right here. See that? What note is that? But anyway, these are front forks. And same old problem that always happens on mine. These are all, all out of round. They're all gouged and messed up so even if you put fresh bushings in it's it's gonna ride the whole thing is ride riding cocked and so even putting new bushings in and it has new bushings in um, it rides like that and this will fix that so we got two of those let me get those out of there they both are producing exactly the same note and here is the that's the wheel motor. So let's do that one next. I'm going to pull that out. Okay. okay, and so this is the way they ship. They give you a new castle nut, and then this spacer, and then a brand new woodruff key. And as you can see, oh, 
am I going to be able to do this one-handed? Yes, I am, because I'm going to have to do this like that. Okay. And there we go. I should go around to the other side. There. Might be able to see it. Okay. There we go. So this goes this way. And I hope we're going to be able to see that line up right there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice. No play. So I am going to have a very solid rear wheel motor set up now. And so all that gouging on the on this old on the old shaft and in here is a thing of the past. It's all gonna be fixed and brand new. Boy, doesn't that look nice? Awesome. Okay, back to the box. Okay, what else do we got in here? We got a brand new, this is a blade belt. I actually, looking through my spare parts, I have a spare uh, hydro belt, so I didn't have to get one of those. Um, but uh, definitely need a new blade belt, so we got that. And now the rear, these are not rear, these are the front tires. And these, you'll be able to tell, by the way, I can't pick them up in one hand. These weigh a whole bunch. <laughs> and the reason why is these are solid tires. These are um, no air tires. Uh, just like I have on the Cheetah. And something you may not know is that the Cheetah's front tires are actually full of holes because I've gone over so many thorns and nails and stuff. And that is an ongoing problem with this mower as well. It's got some plugs in the front and it's going to keep happening so um, I'm replacing the front wheels and tires with these solid ones. Boy they do weigh a lot. Let me get these out of here. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm not even pulling that other one out. But over here we've got the two brand new giant um, idlers. Those are the ones They both have issues, but now they're going to be brand new. Pretty, huh? Look at that. almost hate to use it. Anyway, okay, uh, before I get to those spindles, uh, I got a new PTO switch. Oh yeah, let me show you that. Over here. Look at it, it actually does still work, but <laughs> look at it, it's not going to work very long, I can just, it's seen too much sun, that's for sure, I feel one of these times when I pull it up, it's going to come just apart in my hand, so that's the reason, just uh, age and sun damage, but we'll have a brand new one of those on there. And, okay, so for the spindles, let me grab this spindle that I pulled off of there. Let's see how well we're going to be able to see in here. Okay, nope, I want to go to where I was before. I'll be right back. Okay, so there they are. Three brand new spindle assemblies all ready to go. New bearings, new everything. And here's something new. Grease fitting. The original ones were advertising that they were greaseless, which means they're gonna blow. And so the old hubs don't have don't have grease fittings at all. Now I know I could drill holes, and I did on my other mower. Uh, didn't have them either, so I drilled holes and put grease fittings on and filled them up with grease. But I never got around to this one. And you're probably wondering why do I not just rebuild these? And you probably see it already because uh, 
you know, much cheaper to just rebuild them. Well, it's because the hubs themselves are going. Look at this. I needed new hubs. This is just water damage. And uh, let me go get my compressor, my air tools, and let's go get all these components off this deck. Okay, so I'm going to be starting with a wire brush, um, this type, the kind of a bell shape wire brush. And I've never actually used this particular type. I've used the one that looks like a wheel, but this seems to be the best application because getting down in there, if it was completely wide open, um, I don't think there would be any problem with using the wheel, but to get in those nooks and crannies right there along the edge, I think it's going to be better to have this one and so my idea is for to get the majority of it off with this I hope and then I'll pull out the sandblaster and get the rest of it and then after that I'll be putting on I've got these other products here I'll be starting with this rust treatment here from Permatex that's what I'll put down first because it's supposed to transform any rust into something else that's not rust and then on top of that, I'll be putting on this uh, Rust-Oleum primer. And then on top of the, and then, well, I'll, that's that filler primer. I'm hoping to get a smooth surface. And um, I'm going to put, put a lot of that on there and a lot of sanding to try to get my smooth surface. And then the paint. And then over here I've got some high heat silver. That's for the exhaust. That's for a different day. Okay, but so now I'll be putting this on the drill and we'll see how much grinding we can do grind all that rust some of that paint off of that deck I hope this goes smoothly let's see what happens but now this if I can get this on especially if I can get this on with one hand I think I can this is gonna be very satisfying here we go ready for what? Yeah. Come on now. Oh yeah. There we go. Okay, now I can continue. I win. Okay, so this is where we're at with this. It looks pretty good. You know, it was doing something. I have to admit, it's not... It wasn't doing as good as I thought it was going to do. But it definitely gave it a head start for the sandblaster. I will work on air hammering the deck really good and drying it off and getting ready for sandblasting while this sand dries. So I guess that's what's going to be next.
Okay, so I um, I had reviewed it on the on the camera, and it looked so cool what I did over there that I decided to keep filming. On, when you speed it up, it looks really cool. Uh, everything came off except for the end here. I don't know what the story is here. This stuff is like petrified, but it'll be no match for the sand blaster. Now over here, I just got to do this part, then I'm done with that kind of stuff. Okay, here's your basic sandblasted deck. Just basically sandblasted. I was really glad that I thought of the air hammer to chisel big stuff off because it's going to help out a lot. I know we got a lot of divots and craters and edges and so on, but we got big stuff off. Scraped all that paint off the front. Oop, there goes the camera. And so before the sun goes down here, I can try to get something on it. I'm going to start with this Permatex stuff. Rust treatment. I know what you're thinking. It's not big enough to cover the whole thing. But whatever it covers, it's going to cover. I've got a big can of Rust-Oleum double thick primer that'll go on after that. So let's see what happens. Okay, so look at that. Now, okay, so I sprayed this stuff on there. I sprayed the whole can on there. And it actually did cover the whole thing. It covered the whole thing three times. And at first it just looked wet. But now it's turning black. And uh, what do you know, I was just reading the can. And it is supposed to turn black. So... Ironically, this looks worse than when I started, but it has to dry for at least 24 hours. Anyway, the next scene should be me setting up the tripod again and painting it with the bed liner.
Okay, so there it is. Very black deck, still very wet. And it says that it needs an hour to recoat, but I think that means recoat with the same bed liner. And I'm looking to coat it with paint. So it says wait 24 hours for it to be completely dry. And that's what I'm going to do for sure. I'm not going to try to get the actual paint on here until tomorrow. But that will all still be part of this same video. So yeah, then you'll finally get to see the surprise. What color is it going to be? That should be coming up pretty much uh, in the next scene or two. And there we go. That's right. We're making it into a skag. Close, anyway. Of course, you know, Great Dane was founded by Dane Skag, who founded Skag. So, it is a skag. Now, the color isn't an exact match. This is just called Real Orange by Rust-Oleum, but Rust-Oleum has another color called Sunset Orange that matches the uh, Skag Cat's Eye Gold. Um, you have to order it though, and well, I didn't order it. Okay, I don't know if you can hear me or not. We've got a super windy day, but it is the day to put this together. I've got all the parts laid out, laid out about the way they go on there as, as I remember them.
Okay, so here we go. Sorry to fast forward a little bit. I was busy and wasn't filming. I've changed the motor out, and as you can see, I've got the brand new one sitting there. Look at the difference between the two. Got the nice brand new shaft and the new key set in there the way it's supposed to be. And then the old disaster. Yeah, my neighbor's mowing. It is a nice sunny day here in Florida. Look at this. I think it's like 80 today. Anyway, I have um, successfully changed the motor out. I didn't lose too much fluid, just basically what was in the lines. And uh, I think the main fluid is going to come out of the... Uh, let me come around here. It's going to come out of the uh, tower there. Reservoir tower. I'll pull the bottom off of that and drain the tower and then right back in there you've got the um, I can see that better from the other side you've got the filter and I'll be replacing that I've got a new one sitting right here and uh, there is the new hub okay quite a bit better look at this nice now if I just can find a cotter pin I'll finish that off and put the wheels on. And over here I've got the new filter in and yeah I filled it up with oil and so that kind of gives it a head start. Now I'll fill up the reservoir and put the wheels and tires on and gosh getting there. Okay here we go the moment of truth everything's together everything's ready and welcome back everybody we got a big change of plans that uh, we're going to be doing here on the Great Dane we're going to leave it yellow and the reasons of course are obvious it's much easier to just touch it up in yellow than it is to repaint it in orange even though the deck is already orange it would be very easy to just make that yellow again and parts you know there are parts of this that don't need to be painted yellow and so it's just going to be uh, masking and covering and touching up and we'll get this thing back cutting grass faster and I think that's what everybody wants so we're gonna do some yellow painting first thing we gotta do is wrestle that deck back out of the shed Okay, so in getting ready for that, I had to take all the pulleys and the brackets and the hardware off there again, of course, just for aesthetics. I mean, it can all be yellow, but it just looks better. So I got all that off again, and I'm ready to do this. I put these little paint caps, I'm not going to take the spindles back off, but I put these little paint caps over the uh, bearing. And being sealed bearings, I don't think that the uh, paint's going to get in there, and I don't know if it would be any problem if it did anyway but I'm covering them up anyway so it is time to paint this thing yellow
Okay, so here's a good look at it. Now it is really yellow. Okay, and there we go. Now I did just put on a second coat um, without filming, so you only saw one. And then I came back and hit it again, so it's very yellow. And as you can see, I can still see the paw print, so I can paint that with black now if I want to. Also, if I wanted to get adventurous and try to repaint Super Surfer, I can do that. Uh, it went really well. I'm really, really, really glad at this point that we went with yellow because of all the little tiny cracks and crevices in some areas that I couldn't even get into, that if I was trying to change this to orange, um, those areas would stay yellow. But here it's no problem for um, oh, some areas to just basically barely touch it to get it a little more yellow and it's fine. Whereas if it were orange, you would still see the yellow. I'm sorry I'm in the dark here, but this side looks pretty good. Everything nice and painted again. Boy, this thing was really starting to go. And there's the kick plate. All this stuff, these controls up here, all that was really starting to get oxi oxidized. And uh, that, um, that switch there is getting replaced, so it's no problem that I painted that. Um, I guess that's it. I'm going to leave it like this, kind of overnight, and then I'll take all this stuff off and get a look at it and put the parts back on, like the kick plate and the back panel, and get a good look at it. That should be the next scene tomorrow. All right, and there we go. Got all the masking off, and this is basically what it's going to look like. Basically like it did when it was new, minus all the letters. So there it is with the kick plate back on and this kind of a engine cover. Gives you access back there, check the oil and stuff. And sooner or later I'll get in there and touch up the inside of the wheel and um, so on. Oops, keep going around. And so this thing is just about ready for action again. And I think this is pretty much where I'm going to end the restoration vlog because there's really not much to do left on it. I've got to, um, you'll see I didn't paint this part because this is all getting replaced. Uh, new front forks and new wheels and tires. I've got the solid core tires now. And I've got to do the idlers on the hydro pumps and for some reason the blade clutch is not engaging. I just got to figure out what's going on there because it was uh, when I started this, this vlog. I think it's just a connection. Um, otherwise I can't quite uh, think of what else to say here. Certainly took a long time. It's because for the most part I wasn't 
restoring it. I think it took a year. But anyway, I appreciate everybody that watched it all the way through. I'll leave all the episodes up there for whenever. And uh, so the next time you see this mower, it'll probably be in action rather than in the shop. So there it is. It'll be the only Great Dane Super Surfer out here, that's for sure. Anyway, y'all have a good day.